Good morning. This is a re-recording of the Web Presence Wednesday uh, monthly webinar series by GShift Labs. Uh, it happens at the beginning of each month, and we discuss uh, a number of topics, typically around uh, search engine industry updates. Uh, we normally go over an exercise that can improve your web presence, and we also look into our GShift, our web presence optimization software, uh, to understand how these metrics can be easily tracked and how you can report on them in a timely basis, you know, typically daily, weekly, or monthly. Uh, my name is Chris Adams. I'm the co-founder and chief technology officer here at GShift Labs. And uh, you can follow us online for timely tips and information throughout the month at GShift Labs, or you can personally follow me at Chris H. Adams. Uh, today's agenda that we discussed uh, last Wednesday was uh, around Google Panda 2.2. Uh, some recent Bing updates, Twitter, and also uh, kind of like a, a revised or a new edition of StubbleUpon that we should uh, look at any opportunities that might be good for you as a marketer. Uh, also, we're going to look into a, a guide uh, on blog writing that we just published, and it just discusses around publishing and the socializing of a blog post properly. And again, uh, reviewing uh, how we can track these blog posts simply inside of uh, our software. Let's get started and jump right in. Uh, I mean, Google Panda is nothing new. Uh, it's something that we've lived with uh, for the past year. Uh, again, this is just a new normal with Google. We're looking at 500 plus search engine algorithm updates per year coming from Google. Google Panda just seems to be a targeted uh, name uh, around targeted certain features that they were looking at when uh, doing their algorithm updates. This particular one was looking at duplicate content and what they described as, I guess, uh, practices they, they didn't want to see. Uh, so some websites did get hit by it, especially if you did have duplicate content around your website or on other various websites. Basically, the tips here are blog content needs to be original. Uh, don't copy and just publish and change a couple of words uh, and expect to potentially get away with that in terms of... Uh, we need to, again, look at uh, various original copy around the, uh, the content. And when you're, when you're doing this, uh, obviously, you'll be rewarded with fresh content, and the keyword phrases that are around that product or service uh, will be highlighted. So again, Google Panda also, with Penguin as well, it kind of goes just a little bit deeper, and we should look back in time over it. And it really comes down to some uh, some simple tips around diversifying backlinks. A lot of people simply look at backlinks as uh, the number of backlinks to a particular home page. However, uh, we need to look at what are the what are the backlinks to particular web pages on my site, and, and, and am, I, am I growing that inventory to these pages that actually matter to me? I want them to rank. Not only that, we need to go a little bit deeper and look at the anchor text. You know, are the anchor texts going to these pages? Just click here, learn more. Uh, are they just one keyword phrase? Uh, that might be considered spam in Google's mind as well. So they use the word diversity. So if you are uh, writing blogs or building backlinks to a particular web page, again, looking at the diversification around uh, different ways that you can describe the keyword phrase and pointing to that website will definitely help you uh, in the long run. We did discuss uh, some, some some Bing search updates, uh, obviously, uh, in, in the May uh, or June time frame and also now in July. Uh, Bing just partnered with Yelp uh, to provide some extra local business content. Uh, it is live under bing.com. It has been rolled out to other geographic locations around the world. So definitely if you are doing local search in the United States, uh, it's definitely something you should not ignore. And uh, Yelp typically was more of a restaurant review uh, website, but it is uh, coming of age and it's 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 obviously expanding and, and Bing uh, sees that they are partnering with them to almost, if you want to call it this, uh, the Bing Places pages, just like Google Places pages, Bing will be using them as the data provider for their local business pages. So again, something you shouldn't ignore and you should just uh, explore and keep this on your radar. With Twitter, uh, Twitter uh, made some interesting search uh, changes, and I, and I and I reason why I say search is that you know obviously there is a, a bit of a blur between social and search that's uh, happening, and one could use Twitter uh, to look at new and fresh content around a topic that is being discussed. Uh, 
So again, uh, it's one more reason why uh, organizations do need to be in Twitter and socializing all of their new content uh, and obviously using the right keyword phrases inside of your Twitter posts, not only inside your content on your on your web pages. So again, the interesting part here is that uh, when searching, they're actually uh, isolating or helping you personalize your search around the people that you're following. So uh, this goes back into uh, it's sort of like a chicken and egg scenario where you have to have great content to get followers and then once you get followers they can actually start to search and see your content more which could create more followers so what we need to do again is really be concerned about Twitter using it to socialize our new and fresh content using the keyword phrases that I would be associating to that particular let's say blog post since we're on that subject in this uh, session and uh, in making sure that the uh, keyword phrase is actually in the in the tweet as well uh, we did discuss stumble upon they did a UI change uh, and we think it's pretty good uh, definitely uh, this is something that you should recognize uh, in your marketing plan uh, it is a valid social signal again a social signal is defined as a URL coming from a social media website not a sort of traditional what you would think of as a backlink but we can call it a social link or a social backlink at G if we tend to just call it a social signal it, it, and that sort of buckets uh, likes and shares uh, around that piece of content that you might have uh, just developed, like a press release or a new update to a web page or a blog post. Uh, again, check out uh, StumbleUpon. Our only tip here is that when you start stumbling uh, for an organization, don't just stumble for your articles, but try to uh, look at industry context as well around the keyword phrases or around your brand so that you're providing more than just your brand and again stumble upon uh, when people are seeing that they'll actually see that as a, that you're trying to help and provide information around your industry or product or service. Uh, we did push out uh, this week uh, our new content writing and planning guide really around creating blog posts effectively. We'll just uh, switch right over to uh, taking a look at it. Uh, it's about five or six pages long. It talks about like how to choose the right blog posts and our topics and where to get the right uh, information on. What are these new keyword phrases? What are these long tail phrases that I should be optimizing for in writing some fresh content? And again, these are things that it should be centered around your products and services. So writing the blog post, it talks about uh, how to include an image, how to put an alt text on that image to make it search engine friendly, how to name uh, the image. Uh, when looking at hyperlinks, uh, th this is quite interesting. When uh, we're seeing a lot of this nowadays, most companies are choosing a third domain URL, such as blog.mydomainname.com or even a different blog URL, something, you know, .ca or .com. And then they're linking these blog posts back to their parent website. So this is a great way to build diversification in your backlinks and diversifying your anchor text. So when I'm writing these these blog posts, I can hyperlink to the pages that do matter in my website, and I can control and change up these anchor texts. Uh, they're but thereby playing the game with Google around Penguin and also Panda, and again in the diversification of anchor text and, and backlinks. Uh, when publishing, you could think about when to publish, depending upon how traffic is coming to your website. That matters for certain organizations and, and industries. Uh, the big thing today, obviously, is to create social signals, and we need to socialize our content. So how do we do that in Facebook, Google+, LinkedIn, Twitter, Pinterest? Uh, and then lastly, uh, YouTube, which is uh, not considered really a, a social channel in itself, but it does have some social features. Uh, the cool part about potentially doing a short video along with a blog post is that uh, you can obviously embed the YouTube video in your blog post, but also you could upload that video on YouTube, tag it, and name it properly. And there is that slight possibility that if you did some great things like all in a row that are, are done properly, your web page, your blog post, and even the YouTube video could rank in the top 10 for that certain keyword phrase. Now we define that as web presence. And web presence is not only just having being happy with one URL, we obviously want to have multiple URLs in the top 10 uh, for a certain topic. Uh, and again, uh, 
at, at Jish, if we do have that belief that why we call things web presence uh, is because we believe that it's the website as an organization. They have a blog, uh, typically website. They might have some marketing micro websites. They have press releases, uh, third-party blog posts, mentions in newspaper articles and local directories and also local search pages. So all of these things in YouTube, in YouTube channel. So all of these things do matter, and that's what we call web presence. And the orchestration of the signals and content around all of these properties is web presence management, or we can call it web presence optimization. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's take a quick peek at to how I would go in and take a look at uh, a blog post uh, within GShift. Uh, this is a demo account that we use here. Uh, it's a real estate agency. I'm logged in. Uh, for some of you that are seeing this uh, screen here, it is a revised uh, UI from our 1.0 version, and we have uh, about 50% more social data than uh, collection than before. Uh, so again, we're harnessing in on everything to do with your web presence, and that is backlinks, the social signals, the analytics, the conversions, the organic traffic, how you're ranking uh, for these things, and what should I be doing to my website or blog posts. So again, all of this can be uh, seen uh, very simply uh, within our interface. You can see the different sections uh, as you scroll across. Again, today in this uh, in this presentation, we're taking a peek at you know how let's say. Uh, a certain uh, piece of content is uh, being generated. So we can take a look at this uh, uh, blog, uh, the blog homepage for this uh, particular client that seems to be doing okay. Uh, we have a screenshot here of what the blog uh, homepage looks like for this third-party blog site. Again, for this agency, we have a we have 131 uh, backlinks uh, coming to the site. We need to do some, uh, some more social generation uh, to this particular page. Uh, we're looking at some conversions here. Obviously, that's nice to see a low bounce rate. Uh, and again, I can kind of come in here and take a peek at all kinds of different pages that uh, are being followed uh, from from press releases, wiki sites, uh, local news people, even Tumblr uh, is in here. So again, uh, as you explore and see these new pages, uh, add them into G Shift. Start to track them. We will automatically start tracking the social signals, the backlinks, uh, all of the analytics that are associated to that particular page, and start reporting on all of that. Again, understanding how they rank uh, across the board in any of the search engines that you're following. Uh, so start to do this today. Again, this is a re-summary or a re-recording of our uh, July Web Presence Wednesday, our monthly G-Shift webinar series. Uh, my name is Chris Adams. I'm the co-founder and chief technology officer uh, at G-Shift. Again, follow us uh, throughout the month, either personally at Chris H. Adams or also uh, even better at G-Shift Labs or, and, and also on Google+. Plus. We have our uh, <clears throat> our company page on Google+, Plus, and it's easy for uh, to find find that and uh, also follow us there. Uh, so any search engine industry updates, we do publish it uh, throughout the month. But again, this session here is around uh, understanding what the most important changes were and how to take action and how to get opportunity from these changes. And again, just how to optimize uh, sites better uh, using some guides that we're pushing out and, uh, and, and then also how to report effectively uh, on this information. I hope this is very valuable. Uh, please send me some suggestions on future topics, and I look forward to uh, uh, the August time frame. August is going to be around YouTube, everything YouTube, how to optimize a YouTube channel to a video, how to publish the YouTube uh, uh, videos better, and then also how do you track this? Uh, how we can try inside of GShift, we can track how they rank with keyword phrases. Uh, and again, are those videos coming up on uh, in, inside of Google and Google search as well? So we can tell you all of that within G-Shift, and I look forward to showing you that next month. Thank you.